Sonic, the heart of your system. Hello, Vrani here from KitGuru, and in this review, I'm taking a look at the PC Specialist Fusion 2 laptop that I've got sat beside me here. The specification and the particular model that I've been taking a look at has a retail price of £1,199. So the processor is an i7-8750H, we've seen it in quite a lot of laptops recently. You get a Max-Q version of the GTX 1060, it's a 6GB uh, GPU. You get 16 gigabytes of 2400 megahertz uh, RAM for your memory. And then you also get an M.2 SSD. It's a 512 gigabyte Intel 660p uh, SSD. And then also Windows 10 Home does come pre-installed as well. And that's included in the price. Uh, being PC specialist, you can of course change around a few of the different specifications. You can adjust how much RAM you want. You can adjust how much storage you want and things. And of course that does affect the price as well. Uh, but that's just uh, the specifications on the laptop that I've been reviewing. The Fusion 2 is certainly a portable laptop. It has a thickness of just under 20 millimeters and it also weighs in at under two kilograms as well. In general, the overall design, it doesn't really look like a gaming laptop, even though it is certainly powerful enough to be considered one. I think it is very reminiscent of like an Ultrabook or a MacBook. It has like the sort of like thin, sleek chassis and that sort of like silver coloration that really does remind me of that. The lid is constructed with like a brushed sort of aluminium and it does look very pretty. It's a very good laptop to look at. There's no sort of like crazy branding or flashy RGB lighting. The keyboard is of course RGB, but it is fully customizable. Uh, so if you're not a fan, even though it does shine out very brightly thanks to those sort of like transparent sides of the keys, uh, if you don't like it, you can obviously turn it off or you can change it to like a more sort of subtle pale blue color or something. Um, um, and then it is definitely a more professional looking laptop. The build quality on this laptop is probably what I would consider to be okay. Um, this laptop is definitely at the cheaper end for the specifications you get. Uh, so you're not going to get the same build quality on as a laptop that costs like four or five hundred pounds as much for the same thing. Um, the aluminium lid is definitely a nice touch, but the overall body does still have a, quite a bit of flex to it. It's not as quite solid and sturdy as like a more expensive laptop. Uh, the hinges themselves do glide quite nicely. They're nice and smooth, but once again, they basically don't feel quite as sturdy and as solid as a more expensive laptop. Um, but in general, I do think it is okay. And of course, being a cheaper laptop, you obviously have to compromise on something. Taking a look around the edges of this laptop, you'll see that it has plenty of connectivity. On the back of the laptop is where you'll find two mini display ports. There's a HDMI port, a USB 3.1 Type-C port, and the port for the charger. On the left hand side there is a gigabyte ethernet port, USB 2.0 port and a jack for the microphone and a jack for the audio. The right side is where you'll find two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports and your SD card reader. It also comes fitted with 802.11 AC Wi-Fi and also Bluetooth 5 as well. The 15.6 inch LED screen on this laptop, uh, it's not bad, it's pretty decent. Uh, it's definitely not the best that I've seen, but it does have a 72% NTSC ratio and the viewing angles are pretty decent as well. The resolution and refresh rate is pretty standard. It's 1920 by 1080 and 60 hertz respectively. And I do really like the thin bezel design. Uh, it does definitely look quite nice. You've got a quite a uh, decent sort of screen to body ratio. Unfortunately though, there is quite a bit of backlight bleed. Uh, you definitely notice it when you're looking at a dark image in a dimly lit room. It's something that I don't really like to see because uh, it does sort of reduce my overall experience of using a laptop. But in general, I do think the screen is pretty good. It's basically what you can expect uh, at this price point. Um, so yeah, in general, pretty average. You get almost a full-sized keyboard on this laptop. I do really like the layout they've gone for. Uh, you sort of get like half a numpad and it doesn't feel like it's squished on the end because they've sort of taken out some of the keys, put on the ones that you need. Um, and I do really quite like the layout. There's decent spacing between the keys, which is gonna make 
uh, typing more accurate, it's sort of like a bit harder to make mistakes. Um, and in general, I did find it a decent keyboard to type on. Obviously, it does still feel like a chiclet keyboard that isn't very uh, much travel when you're typing, uh, but I did find it to be a pretty good typing experience. The font used on the keyboard is quite attractive. I do quite like it. There is a slight hint towards uh, gaming as well as the W, A, S, and D keys are sort of highlighted in a slightly more like aggressive gamery font. It is of course a RGB keyboard. You've got four individually controllable RGB zones and you control those using the Gamer Center software that I've got open on the screen here. There's six different sort of uh, profiles to switch between sort of like various flashy uh, ones, ones that change between different colors and things. Of course, there is like a static one as well and you can turn it off. Uh, the movement of the RGB lighting is a little bit jumpy. It's not quite as smooth as some of the RGB lighting I've tested on keyboards in the past, uh, but I do think it does look quite nice and the software uh, in general works pretty well most of the time. At the top of the keyboard uh, is where you'll find all your different shortcuts. Uh, so there's pretty much one for everything you would expect, like volume shortcuts, uh, ones to like uh, sort of turn the Wi-Fi on and off, etc. And uh, the only one I find that doesn't work is when you press the function key and try and adjust the keyboard brightness. It doesn't seem to actually do anything, uh, so you do have to adjust the brightness of the keyboard using the software. The touchpad on this laptop is a really good size, which makes it nice and easy to use. There's plenty of space to sort of maneuver around on there. Um, it's a very accurate and responsive touchpad, basically what you want. All the usual gestures and things seem to work perfectly well. It also has an option as well that I do quite like. If you double tap the top left of the touchpad, it locks it, so it turns off. So if you are gonna be using a mouse, uh, it stops you from sort of like accidentally pressing the touchpad. It's normally a feature you get on laptops but I do quite like uh, the option of switching on and off using the touchpad itself and there's a little LED that sort of lights up to tell you it's turned off also. The left and right click buttons are integrated into the touchpad. I don't normally like that, but with this particular touchpad they do actually feel pretty good. Uh, the left and right click are satisfying and nice and sort of clicky clacky uh, to press. The speakers on this laptop were actually pretty good. Uh, considering it's small size, I wasn't really expecting much. Uh, normally laptops that have a thin chassis, the sometimes the speakers don't really sound that great. Uh, but on this laptop, they did sound pretty good. They are like cinema sound blast of five speakers, if that means anything to you. Um, but basically, they're very, very loud. They do lose a little bit of like the clarity at high volumes and they don't have a huge amount of bass, uh, but I did find them pretty good for when you wanna like sit back and watch some movies. Uh, they're perfectly adequate for doing that. So here is my microphone and webcam test of the Fusion 2. Uh, the microphone is pretty good. It comes through nice and clear and at a decent volume as well. Um, unfortunately, the same cannot be said for the webcam. It is filming me from a very strange angle because the camera is located at the bottom of the screen due to the thin bezels. They sort of squeezed it in down there. It just looks very bad. I don't think I could Skype anyone professionally like this. It just feels so awkward being filmed from like underneath my chin. Uh, and also it does look quite dark and grainy as well. It's not exactly the best quality with the 720p resolution. The software that comes pre-installed with this laptop is the Gaming Center software. I'm not sure who makes that. I'm not sure whether it's PC specialists themselves that sort of design it. Um, but in general, it seems pretty good. It provides a good level of customization. So I'll start off on this tab here. It's called the Easy Switch tab, and it basically lets you sort of turn the backlight keyboard on and off. Uh, you can change some different display settings, so you can sort of change the display color profile and things. Uh, you've also got options to sort of disable the windows uh, 
disable the Windows key, uh, you can hibernate and turn it into low power mode uh, and also enable the discrete uh, GPU as well. Uh, you've got a lighting settings tab as well. So this is obviously where you play around with all your different RGB lighting. So you can change the between the different effects. Uh, you can adjust the brightness, adjust the speed, adjust the direction. Um, and you also turn on power saving mode, which basically like makes the keyboard turn off if it's not used for a little while. You've got the fan settings tab. So what I do like is that you can create like your own custom fan profiles. So if you go on to like the advanced settings uh, in custom mode, you can change how fast you want the fans to spin under different temperatures. And then you've got the system monitor tab. It provides some sort of like very basic sort of uh, temperature readings and also gives you what load the different components are under and how much RAM you're using and things. Uh, in general, I do think the software is pretty good. I haven't really had any issues with it. It seems to work as it's meant to, basically, um, and it does provide a decent level of customization. So now I'm going to move on to what's probably the most important part of the review, and that's all of my performance testing. As always, I'm not going to bore you all with loads of information and graphs and stuff in the video, so make sure to head over to the Kit Guru website. The link will be in the description description of this video and you can check out the full written review with all the graphs, all the writing and extra boring and exciting stuff. Uh, so I started off by testing the battery life on the laptop. It does have a 62 watt hour battery. I used PC Mark's 8 home benchmark um, and in best performance mode it reached 2 hours 49. And then in balanced power profile mode, it reached three hours 12. So in general, that's actually not too bad for this particular type of laptop. Uh, being an artificial benchmark, we say you can probably double those scores in like a real world situation. Uh, so therefore it brings it up to around about six hours if you're not doing anything too demanding and you've got it in a sort of lower power profile. Um, obviously though, if you wanna do something like gaming on this laptop, you're gonna be very, very lucky to get that two hours. Being a thin laptop, uh, cooling is definitely going to be the biggest challenge for the Fusion 2. It does make a pretty admirable attempt. It's got some very big uh, intake fans on the bottom and then it's got four exhaust vents on the sides and on the back that do a decent job of sort of circulating air around. To test the cooling performance, I ran ADA64 for 10 minutes to test the CPU and the GPU simultaneously running at maximum load, uh, sort of running flat out. The CPU, while idle, can maintain its maximum all-core boost clock speed at 3.9 gigahertz, uh, and it reaches sort of around 42 degrees, which is pretty good for idle temperatures. Under load, it did peak at 92 degrees before that boost clock speed was reduced to about 2.8, 2.9 gigahertz, and there was a more reasonable temperature of about 85 degrees. It does sound bad, but that's actually what we expect from this particular CPU. Um, the overall boost clock speed for this particular laptop was only sort of like slightly below average from what we've seen from other laptops. Uh, the GPU, because it is the Max-Q version, not the full fat GTX 1060, that stayed at a really nice cool 76 degrees as well. So in general, the cooling performance on this laptop is pretty good. Um, and the chassis doesn't get too hot either. I was using it on my lap uh, underneath. It doesn't get it gets warm, but it's not like hot. Uh, I'd say the hottest place is probably just above the keyboard here. I think it's probably where the sort of like CPU and GPU is situated. It does sort of warm up before the hot air gets blasted out the back. Um, but yeah, it's certainly not too hot that it's gonna burn you or anything. So cooling does obviously come at the cost of fan noise. And of course I did test that as well. Uh, this laptop, the fans aren't actually too bad. It's not to do with like the maximum volume. It's more to do with like the overall fan curve. It basically means that when you're like browsing the web and sort of just doing like general word processing, even like watching a video as well, uh, it stays cool enough that the fans don't really spin up at all. Uh, it's basically like whisper quiet when you're doing more lightweight tasks. Uh, when you do put it under load, the fans do reach a sort of maximum decibel level of 55, which is definitely pretty high. You can get that effect if I press the fan boost button. I sort of lean into it. I imagine you can probably hear it does make a pretty loud noise and it's also at sort of a pitch that is a bit irritating as well. Um, 
I think it's not loud enough that if you use headphones, it's gonna be an issue. The speakers are also loud enough that they can overpower the really loud fan noise. Um, but I do think if you are gonna be in like a silent setting, maybe if you're sat in a library or something, if you're gonna be doing something like rendering videos or trying to play games, you're definitely gonna annoy the people around you with that fan noise. The Fusion 2 achieved a Cinebench score of 1,115. Uh, looking at our chart, you can see that it's pretty high up there. It can maintain a pretty high boost clock speed for a short amount of time for sort of a quick burst of performance. Looping Cinebench like 10 plus times does drop the score down to 1,092, but that is still pretty high up there. It shows that it's definitely uh, one of the best when it comes to rendering performance when you compare it to similar machines. The results from our 3D Mark testing saw the Fusion 2 sitting in last place when compared to similar laptops. Uh, this is because the other laptops we've tested with the i7-8750H processor tend to be equipped with a more powerful GPU, so it's sort of like the GTX 1060 and above, not the Max-Q version. Uh, when looking at the CPU and physics scores from the 3D Mark testing, you can see that it does uh, sit somewhere sort of like happily in the middle when it is a bit more of a fair test. To test the gaming performance of the Fusion 2, I used my three tester games, that's Far Cry 5, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands, and Rise of the Tomb Raider. We test them at their highest graphical settings with anti-analyzing disabled as well. Uh, unsurprisingly though, the Fusion 2 did sit in last place once again, that GTX 1060 Max-Q can't keep up with like the full fat version. Um, however, if you look at the FPS figures separately from comparing it to the other laptops, you can see that it still does get very good FPS at the highest graphical settings. Those games are still very, very playable on the 1080p 60Hz display. So overall, I do quite like the Fusion 2, but I think it is definitely more than a gaming laptop. Uh, if you're just after a laptop that's purely for gaming, I really recommend checking out the Recoil 2. It's a very similar laptop, but it has features that are like more aimed towards the gaming market. Uh, Dominic did a review of that one. Uh, he actually really liked the laptop, so I recommend checking that one out if you're after purely gaming performance. The Fusion 2, it doesn't have the best of the best gaming performance for your money, but it is a very sort of like thin, portable laptop. It's quiet and it also has good battery life as well. I think it would definitely be more suited to like a professional user, so someone that wants to do like video editing and photo editing, maybe a bit of like gaming on the side as well. Um, I could actually sort of like see myself buying a laptop like this because I've already got like a powerful gaming PC and when I buy a laptop, I want it to be portable, I want it to be lightweight, uh, but I also don't want it to be like a complete potato, I want to be able to do work and game on it, um, but I don't want it to be like super expensive like an Ultrabook either. Uh, this one, you do sort of sacrifice a little bit on build quality. The display maybe isn't the best either, but I think you do get quite a lot of laptop for your money. And I think it suits that particular use case really, really nicely. And I definitely think it's a laptop worth considering. If you like this video from Kikuru, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't been on our channel before, welcome. Uh, please hit that subscribe button and also remember to press the bell icon as well and you'll get a notification every time a new video goes live.